here. Hello, lovely people. Pretty see is back online. At the time of the day. The time is here. The time is now. We have about, let's say, 10 minutes to the time. And uh, we use a line. Seeing if we can uh, just get some friends around. Friends to support. Friends to see if uh, everything's going to go alright. Yeah, so crazy zone. This is crazy talking to you from Shanghai. Today this evening uh, I was at the Shanghai Pearl Tower or Rental Pearl Tower. I took a, a short video of the place. I think the Chinese really did well. They built a city, they built a city, and the city is, is Oh, nice. If you go there and look at the view across the river, you see it like uh, a city on the on the river. The Pearl Tower is a, a very beautiful landscape. Anytime any of you pass by China, pass by the city of Shanghai, make your point to come see the place. Actually, I'm not. I'm not. Um, any advocate for the Chinese people. I'm not an advocate for the Chinese government. I don't get paid by the Chinese people, the Chinese government to say what I'm saying. But I think we should give them some credit for a good job done. When I went to the place, uh, I didn't really believe what I saw. Um, they, they, because, uh, they really built the place up and they made the place up to international standards. It attracts more of their locals to come and see their place. And it's so beautiful. So, um, what I'm saying is, yes, when you go there, you see some um, foreign tourists. But then 99 percent 99% of the tourists over there are local tourists. They are tourists who come all the way from Hunan, Inner Mongolia, the north of China, the south of China, then in the west of China and the central part of China. So if we have some African countries restructuring themselves and uh, thinking about tourism, building the tourism industry to satisfy the local market I think uh, it will in a way make the country more money because in China I think uh, the local tourism make more money than the foreign tourism though the money they make from their locals I think will be more than the money they make from uh, their tourists that come from abroad we are still waiting we are online we are online live. Hoping brothers to join. If you are here, let Chrissy know you are here. If you are with us, let Chrissy know you are with us. This is crazy, crazy. The local tourism is, is just wonderful. It's something that uh, I hope one day. African countries will like copy, change, copy, make some small changes to suit them. Because um, if you look on the continent of Africa, it's like uh, we have few local tourists going to city by city to visit the place to see what happened over there. Most of the focus on tourism, we put it on. Um, the foreigners, we, we tell the foreigners to what do you call it, to do that. I mean, we, we want the foreigners to come and uh, do check all those places like the tourist sites. But then, 
I think there should be a time where we mainly focus on the locals because the locals are those with us and I think um, they are those who help their business grow. Yeah, so we are broadcasting live from Shanghai. And um, if you want to be a guest of the show, um, let me know. If one day you want to be a guest on the show, let me know. Yao Abraham, I salute you, sir. Yao Abraham, God bless you for coming. We are still live from Shanghai. So what I'm saying is, we should also focus on the local tourists. We should focus on uh, maybe a Ghanaian going to some the other parts of Ghana to tour. We should our country should create the road networks, should create a bus system, so that uh, somebody will. Somebody who is living in the south of China, I mean the south of Ghana or the south of Nigeria or the south of Cameroon can just get up and go to the north of Ghana, north of Cameroon, north of Nigeria. We should build the local tourism industry, then the foreigners will come in. And that's a nice job that the Chinese people did that I really give them credit for. You should give credits where credits is due. Yeah. They did a pretty job over there. So whilst you're waiting for people to join, if you're online, just 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 let me know. Just write I'm here. I'm here. Back to what I was talking about. This evening, I mean, the time I went to the Pearl Tower. Aside um, the system that they've created for tourism at the Pearl Tower, um, it's a nice scenery. It's a very nice scenery that um, those who are into photography can um, take good shots and um, advertise the country. So the country itself. Wouldn't be spending money going to CNN and BBC to advertise the country, but then local tourists looking at the beauty of the country will take pictures and uh, say good things about the country. Foreign tourists also come and see this marvel, and uh, they are going to say good things about the country. So to me, uh, I think African governments should stop advertising. Uh, the tourist sites in, in Africa, advertisement is not so important. They should first build the road networks. They should first build good tourist sites, make it make it marvelous, and uh, other people will follow. It's about two minutes to the time, and we hope we have more people join us. Yes. Ruby, Ruby is here. Ruby says, "Good job, crazy. Thank you, Ruby. Thank you for your support. God bless you." And now we have Yao Abraham also online. Yao Abraham, thank you for joining us from Japan. Ruby, thank you for joining us from Ghana. We really appreciate you to join us. So um, it's about, let's say, one minute at a time as uh, we are hanging out here, as we are all here, I would uh, encourage us all to think about some very few things. Actually today we are going to talk about doing business in China, so start preparing your questions. Imagine yourself if you are supposed to be traveling to China. Think about how you are going to go around, how you are going to survive, and uh, start getting questions for me.
Yeah, we are still on. We are still on. All right, it's 8:30. So now we got we got to start a program. Thank you for coming. As you know, my name is Quasi, and um, I'm talking to you live from Shanghai. And uh, there's a live show. Normally, every week, Quasi does a live show to explain and talk and make a discussion, like uh, uh, do a discussion about things that's happening in China, things that everybody can benefit from, things like business, travel. Trends in China, jobs in China, studying in China, anything that's going to do with China that uh, foreigners can benefit. Um, every week on Saturdays, 8:30 p.m. Beijing time, we are on. And 8:30 uh, Beijing time is about let's say 12:30 in Ghana. It's also 7:30 in Jamaica. And um, at that same time. It's uh, 9:30 in um, Brazil and 9:30 p.m. in Japan. I salute Mr. Dela. Oh, Dela has been a long time. Thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate it. So let's start the show. Today we are going to talk about doing business in China, and uh, we are going to spend almost about 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes, we have a question and answer section. Um, I'll give you a chance to be ask, asking me um, questions as I uh, as I flow, because um, m- most times people will not have the time to hold on to their questions for all that 30 minutes before they ask the question. So if you have any question during the time I'm flowing, you can key in your question, and I'll be. Um, I'll, keep, I'll come back to your question. Um, tell the whole public. I mean, tell the people about your question. Just read your question out and um, try to give you answers quickly before I go back to what I was talking about. So today I'm going to talk about doing business in China. Okay, if you want to do business in China, first of all, you can decide which um, way you are going to do the business. Are you going to do the business online or you are going to do it offline? Because in China, you can stay online and do business, and you can stay offline and do business. For me, most of my business that I do on, in China is online and offline. I get my customers online. That's my customers here in China. And um, those in China, after meeting them online, I then meet them offline to complete their business. Uh, about, let's say, 70% of my work is online work and 30% is offline work. So if you want to come and do business in China, you can decide whether you're going to do the online or the offline or both. You can do the online and offline. Okay. So let's say, for example, you are somewhere in Japan or you are somewhere in Brazil and you want to come and purchase. You want to do business in China, you want to come and purchase. The first thing you do, because you don't know anybody in China, first you need to go online and search for the manufacturers who are selling your products or you must search for the people who are advertising your products but then i will advise you to try and get into contact with the manufacturers almost 90 percent of the people we see online talking about product advertising products are just agents the real manufacturers are behind and the real manufacturers produce the goods in large quantities so First step, you go online, you find a company. And when you find a company, you talk to them about their product, you examine their product, and if um, you're interested in their product, then you can take the first step to go online and uh, make payments. To go online and make payments, you can take their bank details, you can do a bank transfer to them, or you can do a Western Union. Any, anyhow, you can do a transfer. Just try, um, try as much as possible to send the money to them and they will send the goods. That's the online business. You meet them online, you send money, they also send you goods. But the offline business is when uh, you talk to a company, you tell them you want to uh, come and inspect the products, see the product for yourself, test the products, and after testing the products, 
then you go ahead and pay them in cash or you go ahead and swipe your credit card your mastercard your visa card you swipe it and you pay instantly that's it offline business so if you want to do the online and offline business there are pros and cons for this online and offline business and um, to go into details i'll say you can choose your style of business for me i choose both the online and offline but then um the advice i'll give you is if you are starting business in china you can and you don't have a huge capital you can start an online business you buy that small petty tennis from china online and let them ship it to you because you wouldn't have big or huge money to fly to china to come in and spread the rules so if you are starting with uh, a small capital then the online business soon will be good for you but then as your capital is growing as you are making more profits then um it will come to time that you are buying the goods in large quantities so um as you're buying the goods in large quantities then you need to come and uh see the factory see how they produce your goods uh inspect your goods and make sure everything is uh produced then you see the shipment process and all that you see that too yes that is when you are making large profits or you are your, your business is um improving so um if your business is making profits or you want to make a large order put in your mind that uh you one day need to come to china fly to china and uh, come and check on your last purchase when flying to china uh, i made a video on my youtube you can go and watch it business visa once when flying to china you need a visa and that, that visa is called business visa your company can help you the company you are buying from can help you apply for a business visa but then um i also uh put i also give all the steps that you need to go through when you are applying for the business visa if you go to my youtube that is crazy crazy let me write it for you crazy k-w-e-s-i crazy 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 if you go to this youtube crazy crazy you can find um the video that will show you how to apply for a business visa that is when maybe your company is becoming big or your business is, is improving then you apply for the business visa you fly to china and you come and inspect the goods yes so go to my channel on youtube crazy crazy watch that video and uh understand how that video is if you have any questions you can ask me a question on that platform i'll be there to explain uh for you so let's go back to what i was talking about the online business if you think um you don't want to fly to china then there are some people example if your business becoming big and you don't feel comfortable flying china uh, you don't want to go through all that cultural shock if i say cultural shock i mean uh things that you see first when you come into a new culture like you fly from the african culture you come to chinese culture there's something that you see that will shock you those are the cultural shocks okay uh if you don't want to encounter all those cultural shocks you don't want to have problems with the language and all that there are some Ghanaian or african agents who can um they are here and their job is to inspect goods they can inspect your goods for you they can make sure um everything is okay with the goods so um your goods will be shipped safely to you that is if your business becoming big and you still don't have the time or you still don't think it's uh, relevant to fly to china then you can contract these agents and they will check out your goods for you and they represent you there they'll be your representative they'll make sure everything is okay before your goods are shipped to your home country now let's come to one thing you need to uh, you need to grip i mean one thing that you need to be conversant with when you are doing business in china when you're doing business in china or when you want to do business in china first you need to learn about their culture learning chinese culture is very important you know to do business with everybody the europeans do business with the jews do business with the arabs to do business with africans you need to learn the culture of the country the culture of the country is very important because it makes you know how the people think and if you know how the people think it's very easy to deal with the people so first you, you can learn about the culture of the chinese people you can go online to learn about the culture you can go on youtube to learn about some chinese culture if you have a chinese friend 
uh, he can teach you a little bit about Chinese culture. I also make some YouTube live videos on uh, the Chinese culture that uh, will be relevant to business. So you watch maybe next week or next two weeks I'll do that. I'll do that live concerning only Chinese culture. So you need to learn the Chinese culture. And when learning the Chinese culture, you need to know that um, cultures are different in different locations. So um, knowing how the Chinese think shouldn't be um, something you see as a problem. Example, if they think in a way that you don't believe that way is right, don't see that as a problem. See that's how they behave and how they think in their cultural settings. You understand? Yeah. Don't see that wrong, but then see that's this how things are accepted in their settings. Example, um saying um I mean uh doing advertisements or saying everything for the clients to buy a product is not seen as wrong in the Chinese culture. They can say everything to make you buy the product. But then in let's say the African culture, let's say the English culture, if you uh, send these misleading uh, advertisements, um, it's seen as a as a wrong um, as a wrongdoing, like you've done something wrong. But then in the Chinese culture, they don't put that emphasis on it. There's no big emphasis on the fact that uh, if somebody see everything to make you buy its product, they don't see it as, as wrong. You know, so that's the little difference between the culture. So try to learn the Chinese culture. You can learn it online or you can learn it offline. The next thing you should learn is the Chinese language. The Chinese language is very important. If you are going to do business with the Chinese, try to have basic Chinese example try to know how to uh, mention their their what do you call it their figures uh in uh in their own language example if you want to say one thousand you can say uh each year or if you want to say one hundred you can say e buy all those that's uh something that if they see oh you've learned some small things about about them they will, they will like it, they will love it, they, 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 will, they will appreciate it. They will feel maybe you've been here before and you stayed here before and uh, that will clear their minds. And uh, it will make them know that since you stayed here before, you know what is happening here. So they wouldn't be in a position to hide the price or they wouldn't be in a position to overcharge you. So if you know this basic Chinese, like the numbers, you know how to say hello, you know how to say, you know how to, ask them how's business, you know how to ask them or oh, how's work and all those. They will have a feeling that oh this person has been here before or this person has stayed here for about six months or one year so he really knows us, he really understands us. So uh, they wouldn't be trying to be smart on you, they wouldn't be overpricing you because they know that oh uh, there are other options. Since you stayed here before, if they overprice the uh, product, you go look for other options. They know that foreigners don't know that there are a lot of companies that produce what they are producing. Example, for a phone, there are about 10 or 15 manufacturers of phones that um, if you are here, if you live in China, you get to know all those manufacturers. But then if you are outside China, you wouldn't know all those manufacturers. What you know or what you see are the agents who resell them. You understand? Yeah. So if they know you stayed here before and they and if they know you can speak a little bit of the language, they know you know the inside secrets, so they wouldn't be uh, hustling with you with high price. There are positives, I mean, the advantages of uh, speaking the Chinese, as I told you before, um, it's, it's, it's so good. If you can speak the Chinese language in some little quantity, it can help you. Yeah, it can help you. Another thing I'll be talking to you about, the next point I'll be talking to you about is um, the pricing. The pricing is very important. If you come to China here, there are two categories of price, right? There's a price for the insider and there's a price for the outsider. The insider price is different and the outsider price is different. And um, the insider price is a little bit low 
is a little bit low and the price for the outside is, is a little bit high if they know you don't you don't know anything about um, the products or you don't know any optional company who is selling their products then they'll price you high then they'll price you in the US dollars and uh, it, it's a little bit off the top but then if they know you are an insider if they know um, you you know your lesson right here in China. You've been coming here to buy goods. You've been coming here to uh, uh, purchase stuff. Then they can give you the insider price. You get me? The insider price is the price that you give to their Chinese friends or the Chinese people. But the outsider price is the price that you give to foreigners, people who don't know anything about uh, goods here. So if you are buying something from China, try to come in as somebody who is an insider don't come in as somebody who's an outsider if you come in i mean if you try to buy as somebody who's an outsider then you will have it a little bit expensive than the normal price you get me mm -hmm. so this is also equally important try to come in as an insider if you are buying goods in china they are about uh two pricing systems okay there's a there's a price with tax and there's a price without tax okay if you're buying a goose as example you are buying something like a generator right you ask you do you want to buy it and pay taxes or you don't want to pay taxes on that goose if you decide not to pay tax on that goose and you want the lowest price, the lowest bottom price, they sell it to you, yeah. But then if you decide to pay taxes on that goose and uh, if the product, the machine has a problem, you can return it back easily and it can be repaired. But then if you don't pay taxes on the goose, sometimes, I mean most times, it's very hard to return. It's very hard to return. So if you're buying goods and you think the goods are um, if you think the goods will have problems in future or there are machines that you cannot maintain outside China and uh, if they have problems you want to bring them into China again then I will advise you to be paying some little bit of taxes on it so that if it has a problem because you have your tax receipts they call it FAPIA because you have your FAPIA you can return it into the country and um, get it repaired and export it back to you so this is something you should take note. Yeah. But then if you don't think the goose is uh, anything that needs to be maintained or needs to be repaired in China and you can repair it in your home country, then uh, you don't really need to pay that tax on the goose. Yeah. We have Mr. Yao online. And uh, thank you for being with us. Next thing I'm going to talk to you about is the refund policy. In China, refund policy is blurred and not clear. Most factories and most companies have a problem with refund. Example, if you buy a product from them and uh, you don't need a product anymore, they'll be hesitant to refund the money to you. They will tell you, oh, why didn't you come and let's change the product for you example if you buy a television the television has a problem to return a television for your cash um they wouldn't do it it'd be hard for them to do it only very few companies do it almost 90 percent of the companies around do not do it they tell you oh, um why didn't we send you a tv another tv uh instead of your cash yeah to get a refund policy I mean to get a refund on the products that you buy it's very hard over here for us even if you buy things over here we are very skeptical we really 100 percent double check on the product before we buy because if you buy the product to return it back for your money it's very hard you wouldn't get your money back maybe you might get a product replacement back but then your money you wouldn't get it back unless maybe you buy from there's a website called Taobao. if you buy from there within 15 days if you don't like the product then you get a refund but after those 15 days uh, you wouldn't get your money back and you wouldn't get 
um, the product change that is on Taobao. Let's leave the Taobao side out because Taobao is for only people who live in China. Yep. But going online to buy products, if the product is damaged after shipment or whatever, to get your cash back, as I'm telling you, is very difficult. So take note. If you are buying something from China, try to talk to them about the refund policy. Get to know the refund policy. If you are cleared in your head and you think it's cool for you to buy, then you can buy it. And um, another way to make a refund a little bit easy for you is if you know any um, Ghanaian or you know any African uh, export and import company here in China, you can contract them. I mean, you can pass through them to buy a product for you just in case if the product is defective or the product has a problem then this company can talk on your behalf but then you being out of china making complaints about your product and uh talking to the company you bought your product from it's, it's a little bit hard the com most companies will i mean few companies will ignore you your complaints they wouldn't even listen to you but then if they know it's a company here in China that bought it, the company can, uh, let's say, make complaints, take it to the police, take it to the law court, and uh, things will be, be fast. But then if you're outside China and uh, you have a problem and uh, you are complaining, things are a little bit slow because you're outside the country and it's very hard to grab the country and take I mean it's very hard to grab a company and take the company to the law courts to get your problem solved as soon as possible so you just take note of that mr. Yao is asking a question over here what about if I use visa card yeah visa card you can use visa card to what you got to buy products over here a lot of people use visa card to buy stuff over here you can use visa card to buy on Alibaba there's a site called Alibaba website called Alibaba they sell things uh, to foreigners so you can go on Alibaba and buy a product when you buy a product Alibaba will ship your products to you so um, that is it for the refund then I'll come to the market centers there are so many market centers here in China last time I spoke about it but then I didn't finish speaking about it so right now I'm going to go into details about the market centers we have Guangzhou um, Guangzhou is known for all goods if you want all any goods you want you can get in Guangzhou but then bear in mind that whoever you are buying from in Guangzhou is not the manufacturer it's just an agent I mean it's just a middleman it's just a retailer Guangzhou as I repeat I'll say again Guangzhou are only real uh, retailers the real manufacturers are not in Guangzhou example the manufacturers of electronic equipment are in Shenzhen and they bring their goods to Guangzhou, Guangzhou is like a showroom. So when they bring their goods to Guangzhou, because they know Guangzhou is a place a lot of foreigners come to buy goods, they come to Guangzhou and they, um, they, they exhibit, like it's an exhibition center, they exhibit their goods for people to buy. Also, there are agents who are from Guangzhou, they go around China and buy goods from other places that you, the foreigner, will not know. They come to Guangzhou and come and exhibit their goods and sell their goods in Guangzhou. Yeah, Guangzhou is a market center, but then they are not the place where you can find the manufacturers. So Guangzhou, yeah, and in Shenzhen. Shenzhen is known for electronics. If you want to buy electronics, you can meet the manufacturers over there. If you want any customized electronics, you can get it in Shenzhen. Another place uh, is uh, Shanghai here. Shanghai here is known for chemicals, like let's say pharmaceuticals, uh, chemicals any any kind of chemicals and pharmaceuticals if you want it you can get it here in Shanghai Wuxi you can get a place called Wuxi you can get machines a place called Foshan Foshan you can get furnitures uh, in Tianjin Tianjin you can get some machines there's a place called Hunan Hunan is it Hunan I think so yeah Hunan I think they also sell agriculture machinery yeah so you should take note of this if you want to buy hospital machines there's a place called Wenjo. you can get a hospital machine over there 
and um, next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, scammers. Every country has a good and bad side, and uh, here in China too, we have a lot of scammers. There are a lot of scammers. So if you're buying something online, you should be very careful. Or if you come here and you are buying something offline, you should be very careful. Uh, there are a whole, whole lot of scammers in Guangzhou, but then there are also good people in Guangzhou, good sellers in Guangzhou. And uh, there are some basic tricks that the scammers use. I remember last two years, um, someone contacted me and told me, Oh, crazy, uh, I, bought, uh, I bought a machine. I bought, was it a uh, tractor? Yeah, she bought a tractor from somebody here in Shanghai for about $50. After sending the money to the person, the person didn't send the goods back. So uh, the buyer in Ghana sent me the contact of the seller who's in Shanghai to track her down. I tried several times. Even the company certificate that they gave me was fake. The company certificate wasn't a mainland China certificate. It was a Hong Kong certificate. If you are, if a company is in mainland China, I mean China, and doing business in China, you should make sure the company has a mainland China certificate. If I say mainland China certificate, it's a certificate that's issued by the government here in mainland China. We have mainland China, we have Hong Kong, we have Macau. You understand? Yeah. But then this company, this foreign company, was having a Hong Kong certificate, which is not under, it's a little bit not under the jurisdiction of the mainland Chinese uh, 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 police or mainland Chinese commercial department. It's under the jurisdiction of the Hong Kong commercial department. You get me? Yeah. And, um, you call the person number, the person number doesn't go through. So this Ghanaian couldn't get a tractor and the money back. Everything was just down the drain. Everything was lost and gone. And uh, I asked the, the buyer, that, did you take an ID of the person? When you were sending the money to him, did you take his or ID? He said, no, I didn't take his ID. So if you didn't take his ID, um, what about a company? Uh, which which um, accounts did you send the money to? Did you send the money to a company account? I said, no, I didn't send the, the money to a company account. I sent the money to a personal account. If you are dealing with a company and you don't know and you send the money to a personal account, you sent it to an individual. Thereby, you are prone to be scammed. So make sure that anytime you are dealing with companies and you want to send money to them online, you send it to a company. If it's a Western Union, it should be a company. Uh, somehow it should be, I don't know, if it's, if, if it's uh, Western Union. Western Union, most of the time, I don't know if they allow for companies. But then I know bank transfer, um, you can transfer into the company account directly. But Western Union, I don't know whether it's possible to transfer into a company account. But make sure that if you're transferring a big money, in, if you're transferring a big money to buy something, it should be transferring to a company account. It shouldn't be transferring to a personal account. In this case, the person, I mean the buyer from Ghana who sent the money to China, transferred the money into a personal account. And uh, this person couldn't be found. This person got the $15 and this person got lost. So as I'm saying, they are good people and they are bad people. If they are doing business online and offline, make sure that you are doing business in the right way ask for their company certificates, verify their address, call their phone numbers. If you have anybody, example, if you want to do big business over, let's say $10,000 or $20,000, make sure maybe somebody check or verify them for you. So today, I think it's time, it's about 8.59, and Chris uh, will be waiting to hear from you. If you have any questions, you can uh, start asking me the question. Whilst you're asking me the question, whilst you're preparing to ask me the questions, I will say that don't be scared. Don't be scared to do business in China. China is now the second richest country in the world. I mean, the second biggest economy in the world. So it opens a lot of doors for um, people to come and do business. And uh, the government over here might be trying hard. You know, every government in the world is trying hard to have a good name to have everything under control but then some people are also a little bit bad and uh, you may be doing some crooked things so make sure you don't fall victim to the crooked people 
and try to deal with the real people and the genuine people. Yeah. It's nine o'clock now. Crazy will be taking your questions. If you have any questions, Mr. Dela, let us know. Mr. Yao from Mr. Yao in Japan. If you have any questions, let Crazy know. Also, Ruby, if you have any questions, let me know. Yeah, so it's question time. Question time. And um, I'll help you with one good resource. Uh, my YouTube channel, Crazy Crazy, has a lot of resources about applying for visa to China. If you want to apply for visa to go study in China, to go do business in China, to work in China, there are resources, there are, there are videos that I made showing you step by step how to move from step one to step two to step three until you get your visa. So you can check that out. Crazy Crazy. The YouTube channel name is Crazy Crazy. K W E S I space K W E S Y. Crazy Crazy. Don't forget, you can go there and uh, watch all those videos. And our Instagram channel is also very vibrant. We have a lot of people adding us on Instagram. We, are, we really appreciate our fans. We really appreciate people who follow us. And we would love or would like you to follow us on Instagram. Because if you follow us on Instagram, you'll be able to see uh, our daily activities. Anything that happened here in China, you'll be able to see whether in terms of lifestyle, in terms of um, business, in terms of exhibition and expos, you will love to see, you will see it. I think we have a comment from Mr. Yahweh Abraham. So this, his question goes this way. So how if I buy online without the address and and the number, so it means I'm not getting my money back? Uh, if you buy online without the address and the number, if I get your question right, I mean that uh, Yes, you can buy stuff online. If you are buying online and you are paying by offline means, I mean you are paying by bank transfer or you are paying by um, Western Union. Even if you don't have their address or the, their phone number, you might have you might encounter somebody who is a good businessman or a good businesswoman, and the person will ship your goods to you. But then if you encounter somebody who is a bad businessman or a bad businesswoman, since you don't have the details of how to track them down, they might scam you. So I hope this will answer your question. Yes, they are good people and they are bad people. So if you're buying, be a little bit careful. Be careful. You should know about the seller. You should be able to uh, contact the seller. Yeah. But then... If you're buying something, uh, I mean, large quantities of goods, as I said earlier, you should do your research, you should do your double, your double checks and make sure everything is okay, you are clear in the head before you go ahead and buy your goods. Quiz is waiting for more questions. Would love to have more questions from you. Yeah. More questions. So um, you should understand that um, the business environment in China is far different from the business environment in Africa or South America or United States. Uh, this country is a very big country with a lot of people. So there are things that uh so big in a way that the authorities can't really keep grabs on on whatever happens here so if you have a problem with any company please be quick and let somebody in here report authorities because if you are dealing with a fraudulent activity and you're outside the country it will be hard for the authorities to help you make sure the right thing is done but then if somebody's in the country the, can, the person can represent you here and make sure um, the right thing is done. I'm waiting for more questions and last question. 
before I close the show. I say thank you very much, all my friends in Japan. Thank you very much, my friends in China. Thank you to my friends in Brazil. Thank you, my friends in Jamaica. Thank you to my friends in New York. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate this. Yeah. Thank you very much, Quisi. Uh, need to close up the show. Thank you for comments. Thank you for coming online. God bless us all. And I hope next week you make time to come on the show. Thank you very much. Once again, God bless us. Stay blessed.